So let me give you five steps to really utilizing the power of positive thinking, even though I said this is about negative thinking. And then let me show you how to use negative thinking in an assignment, how to make negative thinking something that's useful for you. So step number one, decide to develop the habit right now, the habit of focusing on what's right in your world instead of what's wrong. The habit of focusing on what you do have instead of what you don't have in a situation. And as basic as that is, and as well as you know it, you've got to make it a habit. Because those habits form the chain of your ultimate character, of who you become and how you end up living your life. We've got to condition ourselves, because if we don't, we'll go back to the automatic state that most people live in in today's society. The way to develop the habit is to go on a mental diet. I did this several years ago. As positive as I was, I was going through unbelievable pain at the time. I had some major disappointments, some frustrations. I felt like I'd given it all. But what turned me around is one day I picked up this book called The Seven Day Mental Diet. It was a little tiny little booklet. And all the booklet really did was, for about 12 of the 14 pages, it challenged me to really see if I could really truly, for seven days, live my life without one negative thought. And it kept saying throughout the book, now don't just say, yeah, I can do it. And don't just say, I'm going to do it. Think for a while before you commit to this. Don't actually commit unless you're really going to do it for seven straight days, no matter what. It doesn't mean you don't have a negative thought. It just means that if you have a negative thought, you don't speak it. You set it aside. You forget about it. Or you replace it. If you say something negative, you go erase. What I really mean is this. Or you say, that's not what I mean. Here's what I mean is this. And you immediately focus on something good. It's not that nothing negative ever comes out. It's that you immediately do not allow yourself to hold a negative feeling, a negative thought for seven straight days, day and night, even when it gets tough, even when somebody disappoints you, even when you get frustrated, even when you give your all and it still turns up lousy. Listen, if all I did was rant and rave on this tape and you didn't listen to anything else I said, but you took on this seven-day challenge, you can't believe what it'll do to your life. Now, I got to tell you, when I first read the book, I thought, wait a second, being positive isn't going to change my life. I got to deal with the real problems around me, those real challenges that are out there. I don't want to just be positive. Somebody says, how's it going? I go, oh, I'm doing great. And they go, why? You go, I don't know, but I just feel good. I don't want to be that way. I want to be real. I want to be on top of things. But you know what? I thought, wait a second, I can be positive about solutions. I can still notice that there's some challenges out there without being negative about it. I can look at the challenges and say, okay, here's what's good about this. Here's how we can use this. Here's how we can turn this thing around and continue to focus on that. So I took on the challenge for seven days, changed my life. Now, by the way, one of the keys is you have to have seven straight days of being absolutely positive. Not one negative thought, not one negative expression that you hold on to. Got to let go of it immediately. If you do not do this, if you're three days into it and you do well, and then you have a bunch of negativity, you got to start over. And you know what? After you go about four or five, six days in a row doing really well, something major negative is going to happen. (laughs) How's that for some positive programming? But what it is is a test to see how committed you really are. I'll tell you something, after seven days, you feel like a different person. People around you respond to you like you're different as well. All you want to do is establish the habit of noticing what you do have instead of what you don't have. Noticing what's great about a situation versus what's not great. Focusing on solution instead of problems. That's what changes your life. Here's key number two. Instead of judging yourself and others, decide, remember these are decisions, decide right now to become curious instead of judgmental. But remember, when you find fault in other people, when you start noticing constantly how they've wronged you, how this person is not good enough, or they're too egotistical, they're too proud, or they don't really care about people, as soon as you start judging other people, you just got to remember something. If you start judging other people, you're going to also start judging yourself intensely. If you're angry at other people, there's a very good chance you're angry at yourself as well. Maybe you need to perceive more and judge less. Maybe instead of finding fault with other people, without really thinking about what they've gone through to be where they are this day, Maybe we can get really curious about what's making this person be in the state they're in, or what's the motivation behind this person's anger. For example, a lot of times we think somebody's being negative or angry or we're frustrated with them, but we never bother to find out what's really going on. I know myself, I was at a party recently, and I fell prey to this. There was a woman who came to the party. Everybody behind her back was talking about how unbelievably egotistical this woman is, how negative she was. But you know what? I sat next to her at dinner time, and I got a chance to really find out who she was. I got curious about her. And I began to find out about all the pain she'd been through in her life when I realized was this woman was just barely hanging on to her life. She just needed to know that people cared, but she was so afraid of being rejected that she put out this ego because she didn't want someone to reject her, so she figured she'd reject them first. And I got a chance to really know her, and she was a wonderful person. I'll tell you something else we've got to be careful of that ties in with this, of our being judgmental. Out of our fear of having heroes in our society today, We seem to try and consume them and destroy them as quick as we can. We try to find something that's wrong with our heroes because, boy, we don't want another Jim Jones. We don't want another Jim Baker. Remember, we got to judge less, perceive more. we got to get curious. Instead of living in a society where we're so afraid 
so afraid to believe in anything or anyone that we believe in nothing at all and we lose our power, our power of positive thinking. We try to protect ourselves from things we maybe not even need to protect ourselves from. Or we live in a society where we try and destroy our heroes, where we take somebody like Barbara Walters, an incredible broadcaster, a woman of incredible integrity, who gets nailed by one person in a book, and it's in every newspaper across the land, how she probably stomped on people to get where she was. That's absurd. Our Martin Luther King, after he's passed on, somebody comes back and stomps all over his career and his reputation. Is that the society we want to live in? Any person who takes glee in watching another person's pain will experience plenty of pain themselves. Remember the quote, he was without sin, let him cast the first stone. The bottom line is if you go looking for brown, you're going to find it anywhere you look for it, in others or yourself. Free yourself from the disease of making others wrong, and you'll free yourself from the disease of making yourself wrong. You have a lot more energy to create solution instead of problems. It's part of the power of positive thinking instead of falling for the destructive power of negative thinking. If you want to get curious, just ask yourself, what do I like about this person? Wonder what's going on with this person that would make them feel this way. How could I help this person? As you ask these kinds of questions, you may learn something about how human beings operate, about their motivations, maybe even some things about how to support yourself as you try to support others. Remember, get curious instead of judgmental. Here's key number three. If you really want to develop the power of positive thinking as a habit, as a lifestyle, as a strategy for success, then decide right now to find something to appreciate from any seemingly negative person or situation and develop the habit of giving compliments. See, if you really wanna have some more positive feelings in your life, you gotta keep focusing on what's right. You gotta get curious. And most importantly, you gotta find something to appreciate even in the tough times. Because in reality, as we've talked about so often before, the toughest times in your life sometimes provide you with the real resources to change your life. So what we've gotta do is find something to appreciate. Not someday when things work out, we gotta appreciate where we are right now. And this is something I talked to my daughter Jolie about today. Because she's in an experience today where I thought, well, gosh, she's not being very positive. And I'm going to talk about positive thinking. Because she came in to see me and she's feeling really sad. She's feeling really down, feeling really frustrated. And you know what her problem is? Her problem is she tried out and won the right to be amongst three girls who dance in the electric light parade at Disneyland. And that was about three or four months ago. She's been going there after school every day, driving from San Diego up to Anaheim burning herself into the ground, getting up and going to school to be a straight-A student still, and trying to visit with her family and her boyfriend. And she found herself maxing out. Now think about her problem. Her problem is that she gets to be at Disneyland and fulfill a childhood fantasy. Her problem is that she loves her family and wants to be with them as well. Her problem is she loves to be at school and really do that. Her problem is she has so much abundance that she has to figure out how to get it all in one day and she can't do it. And she's physically burning out. That's her problem. And you know what? She says, gosh, I want to be home. I want to be with you guys and all these things. I, want, I don't want to miss out on all this great time we have together. I want to be with you guys. I said, but honey, look what you're doing. She goes, yeah, I, well, I don't want to miss out on Disneyland either. I don't want to miss out on my career and what I'm doing and what's going on. What's the problem? The problem is she's finding out what's negative in both situations. She's focusing on what she doesn't have instead of what she does have. Now, I could be negative about that and say, gosh, be more positive. But you know what? In reality, I realized... Being negative in this situation may not be bad. What do I mean? I don't mean being negative. I mean being intelligent. I mean being critical in your thinking. Seeing what you don't have is sometimes useful too. This is what I promised you in terms of the power of negative thinking. Here's how negative thinking can be useful. I sat down with her and I said, honey, I said, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of both. Let's not just be positive. Let's look at it. The whole thing is positive. Let's know that no matter what you choose, you've won. You have what most people dream about. But for a moment, let's be a little bit critical. What do you love about Disneyland? What's great about it? What is it giving you? And let's ask the question that maybe we don't ask very times when we're just being purely positive. What isn't it giving you? What are you afraid about? What are you missing by being there? What's great about being at home more? What's great about those things? What's not great about that? Be honest. If you were there, what might happen that's not good? What might you miss out on? And you know what? By getting her to use both positive and negative thinking, or to be more accurate, positive thinking and some critical thinking, looking at what isn't there for the moment, what she is missing out on, and allowing that pain to motivate her, she was able to clarify what's most important in her life and what's the best way to do that. And she came up with a plan that totally empowered her. And after a couple hours of conversation and fun, she looks better than she has in about six months because she's finally resolved what's most important. And sometimes just being positive and keeping a stiff upper lip isn't enough. Sometimes you gotta stop and say, I am positive, I'm gonna approach this from a positive way, I'm gonna stay in a positive state, but when I ask some questions some people may think of as negative, which is, what isn't working? 
Because if you're not willing to look at what isn't working, you can get yourself in trouble. So when I say number three is develop the habit of noticing something you can appreciate out of the situation, even something that seems to be negative. What I mean by that is find out what's working, but also appreciate what isn't working. Appreciate it enough that maybe it creates enough pain for you to want to make a change. Hey, being purely positive all the time is not the ultimate solution. Being purely positive 98% of the time to me is the solution. Remember our steps. Number one, you're going to focus on how it really is. And that's what we did today. Joel and I sat down and said, let's see how it really is. And let's not just be positive. Let's stop for a second. How is it really? What's good? What isn't good? What's great? What isn't great in this context? Everything is great, but comparatively, what's great, what's not in both situations? Now, how do you really want it? And she decided how she wanted it. Now, what are we going to do to make that happen? And she began to take actions that have changed her life. Probably will affect the direction of her life, maybe even her career. And she feels joyous and excited because she went through the steps. That's the balance between positive and negative thinking. But one thing you got to remember, you're going to spend most of your time being positive. Once you see how it is, that's it. Decide what you want and make it happen. Don't keep going back and saying, oh, yeah, but it's not working. See, balance doesn't mean you spend 50% of your time positive and 50% of your time negative. Remember, balance on a human scale is a little different. Negative experiences are dense, and it doesn't take a lot of those focuses of negative to weigh a lot in your life. Make sure your focus is primarily positive, but at times, at special times that you designate, you're going to say, hey, what isn't working? And allow that pain to drive you to do something that's very positive. That'll change your life. Here's key number four. Decide not to be perfect. You say, what? I said, decide not to be perfect. One way to make sure you're negative is always trying to be perfect. Because you know what? You're always going to notice you're not because you're this thing called a human being. When I talk to my daughter, Jolie, I mean, this girl works so hard to be perfect. Everybody seems to love her. She's a straight-A student. She wants to be the very best at school. She wants to be the very best at home. She wants to be the very best at Disney. She wants to be the best at everything. And I'm trying to be the best constantly. In the past, she always noticed what wasn't perfect, and that created pain. So you can't do that. You're going to screw up. You're going to be negative. Things are going to happen where you don't follow through on what you know. You're going to make poor decisions. You're going to say things you shouldn't say, do things you shouldn't do, mess up like you shouldn't mess up. But you know what? When that happens, instead of being negative and beating yourself up and saying, boy, here's another example of me sabotaging myself, decide what you do want and say, you know, I'm not perfect, but I am good. And what makes me good and what makes me great and what can make me excellent is as soon as I notice I'm not on track, I correct it and I get better. Your goal each day is to get better, not to be perfect. And that's all anyone can ask of you. If every day you really try and contribute more, be more, and do more than you were slightly the day before, that's all anybody can ask. And if you know you're going to screw up and you don't make it a catastrophe, it's easier to bounce right back up. See, the only way you fail is if you quit. But if you learn something and you expand from it and you make some new decisions that enhance your life and the people you care about, then there is no failure. Don't try to be perfect because you'll never succeed. And here's the final one, key number five. Decide to develop the habit of using the F word, faith. Make sure that you're in the position of utilizing the tool that really positive thinking is about. Positive thinking, I've said it over and over again, really is just the power to believe. And as you believe, so is it done unto you. As you believe, so it's created. You need to make certain that you create that certainty inside yourself. And you know what? You and I both know there are going to be times when it looks grim. And the only power you really have is that power to have faith. To step forth and say, I'm going to put myself on the line. I'm going to have the courage to overcome my fears and to take action, even though it may not work out. Even though I may put out my love and it may not be reciprocated, I'm still going to put myself on the line. Because if I don't, that's the only way I can fail. See, without faith, nothing exists. And remember one more thing. No matter how bad it seems, this too will pass. That you've made it this far. You've been through tough times. Times when you didn't think you could pull it off. And you've made it. If you've made it through all the challenges of your past and your life still works, you still seem to be somewhat happy, you're still standing, as they say, then gosh darn it, you're successful. And you can make it through this too. It's the thing that will pull you through. Faith is still the power. It's your ultimate power.